Don Lebatard. Carlos Boozer went on Highly Questionable. If you're not familiar with this, it's basically shoe polish on the head. If you're balding or you got spots there, I used to use on television a can of hair. Stugats. You just, you know, you just, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you just sprinkle like a can of hair in, in a, what? in a spot and it would just cover up, uh, it, it just like, it's, what do it's you like, mean? like, it is. It's, yeah, it's like, like, no, it's like gray spackle. <laughs> this is the Don Lebatard show with the Stugats on ESPN radio. The Daily Beast is where he wrote this story. Jeff Mache with us, and it's an amazing story. Uh, in fact, Jeff, thank you, and I'm sorry we uh, wasted your time with that nonsense. For the people who haven't read this story, and it was an amazing piece of reporting, uh, congratulations. Can you explain to them in a condensed version what it is that you wrote about? Thank you, yes. Uh, this is the true crime story of how an ex-cop rigged McDonald's Monopoly game and stole over $24 million in cash and prizes. <laughs> uh, yeah, and so and so, how did he do that? Because it was, it read, what you were writing about felt like a Carl Hyacin novel. It felt like fiction, what you were writing. Well, truth is often stranger than fiction. And Jerome Jacobson, he's an ex-cop. He's left in charge of delivering all the winning game pieces to lucky McDonald's factories ar around the country. Uh, it's his job to stick them on the French fry packets and the Big Mac boxes, but instead of putting them on the Big Mac boxes, he puts them straight into his pocket instead. And and then nobody play. No, I mean. but how does he do it? To what lengths does he go to do it? And how does he do it? And then how does his plan fall apart? Well, it's good old fashioned theft. In the airport, where he's flying to these factories, he slips into the uh, restroom, tears open the envelope steals the winners and replaces them with blanks. Uh, this goes on for 12 years. He's giving these winning game pieces, sometimes a million dollars each, to friends, family, and then eventually his downfall begins when he trusts members of organized crime to get rid of those tickets for him. Well, how did that happen? <laughs> <laughs> By chance. Apparently he met uh, a member of the Colombo crime family in an airport they buddied up, and soon uh, it's a massive criminal conspiracy with over 50 defendants. That's 50 uh, illegal winners all all across the United States. Smart plan, right up until you trust organized crime. Yeah, well, I mean, but right? I, it doesn't sound like he knew he was trusting organized crime. It just sounds like he's a bit of a buffoon. He might well have been, yeah. I mean, uh, everyone was so shocked that it was him because he was such a stickler for security. All, all the colleagues of his that I spoke to said that he used to check their shoes to make sure that they weren't stealing game pieces. So it was a shock for everyone, not least McDonald. All right. Can you explain to us, though, how how he gave it to his friends? What Stugatz is so of, impressed. I like this guy. Yeah, I mean, this he is, really sold this it. This is man. the Stugatz of McDonald's crime, and he got away with it for 12 years. But uh, can you explain? So was it clean and free and easy and no mental disturbances in his life for 11 years, and then it falls apart at the end? Yeah, he was just a, you know, he was just a guy that got tempted to steal. But, you know, in answer to your question, they would tell lies. You know, his people, his super recruiters would find these winners and they'd say, look, my buddy won this million dollar game piece. He's going through a divorce. He doesn't want to give the ex-wife half. You know, why don't you just buy this game piece from me for fifty thousand dollars and you'll be a millionaire. And most of them fell for it. Uh, what's the dumbest thing that you would say he did? I think the dumbest thing he ever did was trusting organized criminals because that was the right. start of his downfall. I mean, the mafia get involved in anything, don't they? I mean, it's, you know, numbers, rackets, illegal bookmaking, and, you know, even the McDonald's Monopoly promotion. Um, you know, and that's how, it, that's how it started to go wrong for him. How did McDonald's not have more fail-safes in place to protect a giant company uh, from avoiding this kind of stupid shame? That's a great question. Well, they trusted one guy. They thought, I know, we will leave one head of security in charge of everything. Uh, and lots of security experts that spoke to me for this story, they said the same thing. Never trust one guy with the whole thing. You've got to, you've got to cycle out the responsibility. But how does McDonald's not know that? How does McDonald's... <laughs> I mean, seriously! How does McDonald's... Well, they, they trusted an external company. You know, McDonald's is in the burger business. They, they cook burgers. Um, they trusted a marketing company uh, in Los Angeles called Simon Marketing. Um, so they, they trusted an, an external third-party vendor to take care of this for them, uh, and it obviously didn't end very well.
Jeff, I got to be honest, man. Like Ronan Farrow will probably win the award, but you deserve a Pulitzer. Man. I mean, like if we did this Heisman style, it, you would get it, my vote. It, it's man. a really good story. What are your favorite parts of it? Tell the audience. And again, Jeff Mesh with us, the Daily Beast. Tell us what are your favorite parts of the story because it it really did. It felt like you were a novelist. Thank you. <laughs> Um, I don't know whether they do uh, runner-up prizes for the Pulitzer, but um, I think the... Uh, well, the, the Ronan will find out. The so. story, <laughs> my favorite part of the story, uh, easily, uh, is, is, is when uh, the, the organized criminals get involved. And actually, Jacobson, at one point, he's obsessed with psychics. So he's visiting these psychics, and, and he's asking them what he should do. And eventually, he confesses to these, these spiritual mediums that he's stealing the game tickets, and he actually gives them winners as well. So he's got these, these psychics winning $50,000 prizes, and he's trusting them with life advice. So, you know, it really is, it, it feels like a bizarre movie in places. Um, and you left out, and it's not just organized crime, and it's not just psychics. It's also, uh, there, there's, it's a whole motley crew of people that he's trusting, many of them in Jacksonville. Strip club owners, drug traffickers, mobsters. I mean, he, he falls in with the wrong crowd. Let's, let's be honest. Uh, thank you and congratulations on the story. Has anyone from McDonald's reached out to you and uh, with fury and flames? <laughs> Not yet, but I think I might have ruined their plan to celebrate the 50th anniversary of the Big Mac on Monday. It, uh, is, is a, has a movie uh, producer reached out to you? Like, this is going to become a book and a movie, correct? I, I have received a lot of interest. Um, I think there'll be some news on that very soon. <laughs> wow! I mean, nice. <laughs> any room for me, or what do you think? I mean, I just gave you a Pulitzer. Right? <laughs> any room for me in the movie? I mean, he'd be your star. He is this guy. Let oh, me yeah. explain to you. This is the guy you're speaking of. Is the guy I co-host this show with. And I can help you get a larger upfront. I mean, it's up to you. Listen, I'll leave it to you. Just get back, uh, get back to me by COB. Okay? okay? That's all I ask. All right? And let's hope Baselli is not touched by this story. All right. Uh, thank you, Jeff. Uh, we appreciate it, Jeff Mace. Thank you, sir. Thanks, guys.